Wow, a fantastic country. This is Idaho. I'm here to track wolves, one of the most elusive of all mammals. And I think this is possibly going to be one of the toughest things I have ever done. Wolves can travel huge distances, and they're incredibly secretive. For generations, legends have portrayed the wolf as a bloodthirsty icon of evil. A wolf pack may be a formidable hunting machine, but I want to find out if these highly social predators really deserve to be demonized. Very soon, wolves will be taken off the endangered species list in Idaho. People will be allowed to hunt them. So this could be my last chance to track wolves here. Idaho's glacial valleys and wilderness areas are perfect wolf habitat. So beautiful. With over 80,000 square miles, the state is larger than Great Britain, and most of it is completely unspoilt. I'm heading for the town of Stanley, at the foot of the magnificent Sawtooth Mountains, a well-known center of wolf activity. Helping me film this quest is one of the world's finest wildlife crews. Shane Moore, Isaac Babcock and his brother Gabe. Gabe, Great. you must be good. Nice yep. to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. Fantastic. Come in, the coffee's on. All right. Straight off the bat, the pressure's on. We've needed a, a real tracker, Ray. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't know where we can find a real tracker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. yeah. We tried the yellow pages, that didn't work. <laughs> dawn, and it's minus 10 degrees Celsius. At 7,000 feet above sea level, Stanley is living up to its reputation as one of the coldest places in the US. But spring is on the way, and the area is already teeming with wildlife. Rodents, like ground squirrels, are coming out to feed, and otters are mating. Bluebirds and cranes are migrating in, and all of them are leaving their marks. In these parts, the wolf's principal prey is elk. They're much larger than deer in the UK. They usually move around in herds and tend to search out open ground to make it as hard as possible for wolves to ambush them. The thing that concerns me is that it's the changing season. So the ground conditions are changing hourly, not just day by day. You know, one minute it could be snowing, the next minute it could be sunny. For tracking, it's going to be really challenging. We should have started off with rabbits somewhere, right? <laughs> not wrong. I think it would have been easier, wouldn't it? The crew are out early. Shane has been filming wildlife for over 20 years, and Isaac is an expert on wolf behavior. Even with their specialist knowledge, we're still looking for a needle in a haystack, which is where my skills have to come in. I'm going to be out all day looking at tracks today, so I need to take some things with me, some water, some food, a good warm jacket, nice and light. And wherever I go now, I'm also going to be carrying with me some special track casting plaster. I've been really looking forward to this, my first day tracking. I'm on the hunt for anything that indicates wolf presence. There are several steep valleys around Stanley, and I'm going to start by heading for the ones to the north. Beautiful country, stunning. Lots of ridges, little gullies, Excellent country for wolves to hide out. Really good predator country. Oh, 
I've stopped here because I've got this nice track going off into the country, some sandy ground, and it's a likely place to, to look for a track. This is a truly vast landscape, so I need a good strategy. What I want to do first is locate the wolf's prey, so I'm looking for elk tracks or possibly moose. Prey animals are more numerous, so they'll be easier to find. Where there's prey, there'll be predators. I can see some marks here. That's elk. That's what I'm after. Now I need to determine how fresh that sign is. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to make a mark beside it with my thumb. The ground's very hard. I can't make a dent in it. That track was made when the ground was moist and soft. So elk have been here, certainly before the ground froze. This is promising. I'm going to make a cast of the track because that can reveal a lot about the animal that left it. And while it sets, I want to find out where the elk was heading. Having a look at the ground, I'm reading a story here. This area has had snow on it until maybe a week or so ago, not very long. There are a few tender young green plants coming up over there, and running up through this gully, there's a well-established game trail. Probably herds of elk following the line of the snow melt, feeding on the new shoots. And here on the ground, I've got a variety of elk droppings of different ages. And there's fresh droppings, that's very fresh. That means the elk have been here for a little while. And perhaps the most exciting thing of all, I feel as I'm being watched. And that's something I learned a long while ago while tracking foxes to never ignore. I feel I'm being watched from up there somewhere. You may think this is a bit odd, but I do believe in a kind of sixth sense. Maybe it's my subconscious reading signs before I can work them out more rationally. But I can imagine wolves prowling up there. Their presence alone intimidating the elk into moving to just where they want them. So the question is, where are they now? Looking at this, I get a sense of the size and scale of the animal. It's a pretty big animal here. And that's interesting because hunting these creatures for wolves is a very dangerous business. One kick from a foot that large can do an awful lot of damage. The ground around the game trail is covered in heather-like sagebrush, which makes prints very difficult to spot. Got another set of interesting tracks coming down through here. And this ground is much softer. And here there is an outline only. It's just the outside edge of the foot. And that's why you have to pay really close attention to the shapes of tracks, because that's a wolf track. Perfect. It's difficult to say how recently it's been, but it's certainly no older than 12 hours. I think it's probably less than that. Well, that's fantastic. That's the needle in the haystack. That's the first wolf track. We've got elk tracks here, the prey species. And within 15 feet of them, a wolf track. I think elk are moving down this natural corridor, the huge Salmon River Valley, and wolves are trailing them. So I'm heading for the thawed pastures further down the river. It turns out that's exactly where a herd of elk are grazing. Wonderful. They're big animals. Adults like these are at least five feet tall, but despite that, wolves have no trouble taking them down. Just one could feed a whole pack for days. If the herd's anxious, they'll probably retreat into the river, where the water makes it much harder for wolves to attack them. They'll also react if they catch any scent on the breeze, which right now is blowing away from me. 
wolves, just like human beings, stalk into the wind. So if, if there was going to be uh, a wolf arrive here to hunt these animals, it's most likely they'd come from that direction. Beautiful animals. They also look very tasty. Got to start thinking like a wolf. That one just caught our wind now. Just got that look and that nose came out. I spook them, not a wolf. As pack animals, wolves try to corral their prey into tight spots because they prefer hunting over short distances. Further back up the river, Isaac also found elk, but these were behaving very strangely. They were all trapped on a steep snowy bank as though something had driven them there. After a chase, elk are often weak and stiff. The adrenaline rush can leave them almost arthritic. Exhausted and confused, they're clearly terrified. The elk were all balled up in the river right there. And it was cold. You could see them icing up on their hair. And just up the road, before we got to them, we found wet spots where wolves had gotten out and left their tracks running across the road and up the bank on the other side. The elk must have been really scared. They were pretty nervous, yeah. The elk are desperate to leave this vulnerable spot, but their hooves sink deeply into the snow. To try and make their passage easier, they follow in each other's footsteps. They're hungry and want to return to the open pasture across the river, but fear is holding them back. I think the, uh, the, the rearmost of the young calves there was limping with its rear right foot. Any weakness like that is exactly what a wolf will look for, any sign of weakness. And if the animal gets up and runs when challenged, it's all over. Isaac suspects this elk may in fact have just fought off an attack. The lame one had a really bad back right leg, um, somewhere in the hip pelvis, not quite sure, but it was it wasn't moving very well at all. Wolves tend to pick off the old and sick. In the long run, that can actually strengthen a herd. But right now, I'm convinced that the lame elk will be targeted before long. The herd are staying by the water, gradually edging closer to a meadow opposite Lower Stanley. So this is where I'm going to station the crew. This is where I think we'll get our first sighting of the mysterious, secretive ghost in the forest that is the wolf. I'm in the spectacular wilderness state of Idaho, tracking wolves. These secretive predators were almost hunted to extinction, but in 1995, a program to reintroduce them to central Idaho was begun. One of its pioneers was the ecologist, Kurt Mack. This is really the cradle of where wolf recovery happened here in the state of Idaho. Um, it all started right here in the Stanley Basin. There was a total of 35 wolves that were originally released, and they were just released right over this hill here. And uh, they came in in January. It was 20 below zero in the middle of the night, and the roads were icy and slippery. And we had a whole team of volunteers waiting for us. But uh, we all made it there about, uh, about 5 o'clock in the morning. We lined uh, the wolves up one by one, and we opened the cage up, and it was just amazing. So how did you feel after all of that drama, seeing these animals just filter away into the wilderness? 
Uh, I think it was a little bittersweet. Uh, we'd worked uh, for a lot of years, worked very hard for that one moment, and we all just were in awe. I think we were just very quiet. We all kind of looked at each other, and the big question in all of our minds was, what now? Now what's going to happen? Those original 35 formed several packs and thrived. Some were collared to help scientists monitor their progress, and there are now about 850 wolves all across this enormous state. Ironically, the increasing wolf population means they're about to be taken off Idaho's endangered species list. The wolf's hunting prowess was revered by our ancestors, but as soon as people began farming livestock, problems began. To simply survive, the wolf has to kill, and now its predatory nature is again bringing it into direct conflict with people, such as Idaho's sheep rancher, John Faulkner. Have you seen an increase in wolf attacks since the mid-90s? I'll tell you, down on Bennett Mountain, we lost uh, 26 there in two nights. They just killed them and left them. That was my worst experience. And uh, it just kind of makes you sick to see those nice big lambs there if they chewed up their guts out. I respect the wolf, but I expect him to respect me too. And we can live with them. We're not happy with them. But uh, we're going to protect their flock, and that's all there is to it. It disturbs me that in just seven days' time, wolves will no longer be a protected species here and could be hunted. Biologists believe that wolves are programmed to kill surplus prey. Farming sheep puts hundreds of prey animals in one spot, so it's hardly surprising that the wolves' instincts take over. The crew have been waiting for elk at the meadow since dawn. Looks like they may have just come up from the river. It's 6.30 a.m. and there's something happening. None of the elk we've been watching are on the meadow, not even the lame one, but something else most certainly is. There's the wolf, fantastic. That's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. It's quite extraordinary to be seeing such a shy animal out in the open like this, so near the town. And actually, there are two of them. Maybe they've been looking for an elk possibility and had no luck. Yeah, that is fantastic. Yeah. Really, really good. The larger one with the dark stripe down its side looks like a male, a fully grown, solidly built adult that's taking the lead. He could be the alpha male. You can make out the pupils of his eyes, it's really. Yeah, you could really see the expression on his face. They're very expressive animals. They are. Wow, that's something. It is a, it's a privilege, isn't it? It really is. I mean, you, you've been following these animals for ages, haven't you? For, yeah, 12, many years? 12 years, 13 years. Yeah. But you still, still magic now? Oh, it's always magic, yeah. I mean, you just don't get to see them that often. Those pictures better be in focus. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, this can't be the alpha male. He's taking a pee, squatting. If he was the alpha, he'd cock his leg. The smaller one with the more hairy back and slender muzzle is probably a female. It must be because she pees squatting even lower. She could be his younger sister, or perhaps they're marking their territory. She's very intent. It looks like she's looking for small rodents. Wolves are incredibly adaptable animals. They can eat a whole range of things, from the tiniest food sources to the largest. In winter, small rodents like voles are hidden under the snow, but with the thaw, they're suddenly exposed. I guess for the wolves, it's like a massive plate of free dinner. There's a real drama unfolding because clearly the rodents are moving under the uh, cover of the grass and snow there. They're almost poised to have a pounce in, isn't it? Yes, pounce. 
You think it got one? Yeah, yep. got, it had got one. Brilliant, it got one. It is really fascinating watching their technique there, but they're still very intent. You know? Quite the opposite of the ferocity you'd imagine. It's more like watching a ballet. Wolves are mainly active around dusk and dawn. The male seems ready to leave. That nip tells her exactly what he's thinking. I suppose there's a, a moments like this, there's a, a conflict. You know, you've got the, 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 you've got the pack hierarchy for the young ones saying, stay here. And at the same time, the light's coming up, and it's like, this isn't a good place for me to be. So it's quite, quite difficult decisions. Wolves communicate physically, constantly reinforcing their rank. As the female rolls on her back, she's being submissive, telling him she'll toe the line and head off. You think just a, just a few years ago, this was an impossible sight, because there were no wolves in Idaho. It's a wonderful thing to see such an amazing creature loose in the wild, living as it should. Wonderful. Wolves usually stay in the same pack, even as adults, permanently outranked by the alpha. Because they hunt together, there's a fair chance the rest of this pack aren't far away. The youngsters disappear over the ridge. I need to follow their tracks, but the land is owned by a local hunter, Brett Woolley. How do you feel about the wolves? Uh, it's been quite an experience. Mm -hmm. It's a huge waste of money. It's hurting me. It's, hurt, it's hurting town. How's it hurting? People won't go hiking. People won't take their dogs out now. Horses won't leave their pens because the wolves are living right there. And I mean, they're coming down in the backyards. Yeah. And, it, and, and yeah. they don't belong here. My fear is they'll start poisoning again. Yeah. You know, when the wolves did show up one day, they were walking across the bridge. God only knows why. You know, <laughs> if I shot over the top of them. Yeah. You know, that's what we were instructed to do back then. You know, pretty soon we don't got to shoot over the top of them. Mm -hmm. We can hang them on our wall. I knew wolves would be hard to find, but I didn't expect to find that people are their biggest problem. It seems that as soon as wolves come off the endangered species list, people will be lining up to shoot them. Now I'm even more determined to find the rest of the pack before it's too late. While I track the pair over the ridge, I'm sending Shane and Isaac further up the valley. Well, this is the trail. This is the trail. There's hardly anything left. Can you see the staining in the snow here? That is our track. Up there, you see it again. What's interesting is what has caused this staining. It could be soil transferred from here into the snow. I think that's the most likely thing. But also, you get that colour sometimes from blood as well. So if there's blood on, on the feet, it could be causing that. The trouble is, the tracks are simply too faint to follow any further. The snow's been melting during the day, getting small. You can see it's like, like sugar now. It's horrible, wet snow. And it's just not holding any detail for me. It's a bit frustrating, to be honest. This is uh, a wonderful wolf trail, and I've got no more. I feel like we're definitely inside the pack's territory now. But if one's got blood on its paws, what does that mean? Has there been a kill? Tracking isn't just about looking at the ground. Birds can be useful indicators. I need to keep an eye on ravens. They often follow wolves closely, waiting for the opportunity to scavenge the remains of a hunt. Shane, where are you at? Uh, Mason Creek Road, just looking for track. You've just seen two wolves up there on the ridge line underneath the tree. They're right between you and me, uh, so you may have a better view than we do. Right, we got them, thanks. This is an incredible sight. Two new wolves, two larger females. They're in no hurry, calmly using the high ridges, not just for easy access around their territory, but also 
because they're the best vantage point to watch elk from. We found some wolves. I'm guessing that they made a kill. Let's see. I think I could see blood on the lips of one as it walked through. We got some wolves on film, so that's great news. I think they went up the ridge. I'm thinking they have be full bellies. I don't think they went too far. So now we'll start watching for birds, see if we can't locate the kill, and hopefully catch some more later in this evening. Oh, that's great. The two wolves stick together all night. At first light, they're still together, and they finally join up with more wolves. It's the whole pack, an entire family of wolves, all together on this ridge, at least 10 of them out in the open. Now that one with a silver neck is a big wolf. Heavier set, clearly a male. It has to be the alpha. The alpha male is central to the pack and controls its numbers and movements. It's likely that all these other wolves are his offspring, but why has he gathered them on this open ridge? The elk are grazing on the ridge opposite. What a sight, that's fantastic. The lame one is with them, looking weaker than ever. For some reason, there's no hunt. But then the elk are exposed up here. They can see all around. Maybe the wolves are holding off until the elk have moved on to more vulnerable terrain. The silver-necked alpha male leads his pack over the ridge. But one of them's lagging behind. Ray, something's going on. It could be a wolf in trouble. His posture's all messed up. That must be really hard on a wolf because, you know, they're such a mobile animal. It's in pain. But it's a lot of effort, isn't it? You can see in the eyes. It's like, it's like, I want to hunt, but I really don't feel well enough to. Ooh, ooh, ouch. It's bleeding. Ah. And you can see that it, uh, it tries not to put the foot down. And then any time the foot does go down, you'll see half of a paw mark with blood in it. Perhaps it's been kicked by an elk, or worse, could it have been caught in a trap? Oh, look at that limb. Oh, you agonise for it. Ooh. If it is heart-wrenching, you see anything in pain like that, it, you know, it's tough, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. It really is in a lot of pain. <laughs> the female with the hairy back has come over to look out for the limping one. That's really interesting, because with most other species, an injured animal would be abandoned. Wow, I'm fascinated, Isaac. And the lame one's making his way up. At this time of year, the wolves should be denning. And uh, it's quite likely that somewhere up in the hills here, there's a den. And what that means is that um, the pack is anchored to that spot. If there's a female that's gone to ground in a den, the pack will need to supply her with food. Wolves will follow their prey for miles, but now they'll hunt as near to the den as they can. If there's one wolf that's going to take the path of least resistance, it's going to be the injured one. If the pack have a den somewhere over this ridge, I think that is where they're most likely to attack elk. I'm in the beautiful natural wilderness of Idaho, where I'm tracking a wolf pack. I think they may be about to hunt in the vicinity of their den. Trouble is, that's likely to be very well concealed. Whew. 
Now that's really interesting, look. Here's our wolf. In fact, I found the tracks of at least four animals coming up here, going backwards and forwards, old and new sign. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. This is a huge print. The alpha males, I'd say. That is the best cast I've ever made in my life, and one of the most exciting. There's so much sign here. It means we're right in the heart of the pack's territory. The crew split up, following the tracks in search of the den. There's wolf tracks here too. The place is full of mysterious burrows. It looks more like a badger's hole. And a disused wolf den from previous years. This is an old wolf den. Look how small the hole is. Boy, I don't know how the heck a wolf fits down here and dig this stuff out. There's an atmosphere here. There's an atmosphere that says there's a secret. It's hard to explain it other than that, but you can sense it. It's a magical feeling. Despite hours of searching, the den site eludes us. But at dusk, Isaac and Shane spot the silver-necked alpha male. We saw a wolf up there, and uh, we came down here, looked around, and there's an old bull elk over there. It looks like they've been feeding on it some. This isn't a wolf kill. The elk most likely drowned over the winter and is only just thawing out. It's not what we expected, but the Alpha has led us to a feast. He gorges away and then struggles up the hill. It's likely that he's going back to the den to regurgitate food for the mother. His belly can probably hold 20 pounds of flesh, and he's certainly so bloated here that he can barely walk. The Alpha keeps coming back for more. That's some sense of duty. He also keeps signaling to this young female with a collar who is keeping lookout just above him. Eventually, she joins in. Amazing. She's regurgitating food for the den's occupants, even though she's not the mother. It makes me admire them all the more when they collaborate like this. It's a very human-like characteristic. They carry on tirelessly until the sun rises. The young female is still on duty, but she's looking anxious. Very shy, you know. People think they're these bloodthirsty killers, but I mean, they're, they're, just, they're shy and very afraid at times. So. Now we think we know where the den is. Isaac and I climb the ridge. This is a boneyard, look. Look at that. Yeah. Being chewed on, too. Something's had the marrow out of it. Yep. It'd take a wolf's jaw to do that, wouldn't it? I read somewhere it's 1,500 pounds a square inch. Yeah, that's some bite. We need to be extremely careful not to disrupt the den site, so we're going to quietly observe it from about 400 meters away. Let's sneak right over here between these two trees. There are now only three days until these wolves are off the endangered species list. They could be hunted and I might never get this opportunity again. Tell me about the pups that might be in there at the moment. They've probably been born just seven to 10 days ago. So they're still in the den. 
blind and helpless and relying on their mother to nurse them and keep them warm. We watch for a few tense hours, but there's no sign of any wolves. In fact, nothing happens at all until nature sends in a blizzard. I can't believe it. We've gone through all the effort of coming up here. Now I can't see a thing. Yeah, it's sucked in there. God, believe it. This is pretty much a disaster. The snow will wipe out every track in the Stanley Basin. The whole place suddenly feels not just cold, but like something's gone. And I don't understand why. It's incredibly frustrating not to have seen anything at the den, but the locals don't seem to care about the weather. The elk have even moved onto the meadow, right to where the wolves were. I have no choice but to wait until the sky's clear. On the way back to the den site, we find the lame elk is still alive. Do you think that's the injured one? I do. It's interesting that it's chewing the cud quite calmly. And around the den, there's still no sign of activity. Hoping we're not back to square one, we split up and search every wolf highway we know of. We've got real bad news. We've just stumbled upon a dead wolf. It's laying there in the snow and I don't know what to make of it. I think we should go take a look at her and see if, uh, see if she's lactating or not. And if she is, we've got big problems. If she isn't, it's still pretty unfortunate and we've still got some problems. This isn't good, it's a bad deal. I don't know. It's her. It's that younger female. Boy, she hasn't been dead very long. Uh, sorry, old girl. How awful. It's the young collared female that was working so tirelessly all last night carrying food back to the den. Isaac has to take her to the authorities. What will happen? We have some hunches, but we don't know for sure. There's nothing obvious. There's no gunshot wounds. Uh, there is, it looks like, some internal bleeding, and I'd say poisoning Poison. isn't out of the question. Retinone or something like that. Mm -hmm. Was it poison, first of all, but second of all, did the rest of the pack get it too? Mm -hmm. you know, if they were eating on the same food source. You're quite choked up about this, aren't you? Uh, angry, basically. If if that's if that's poisoning, yeah, that just makes me really mad, and furious, frankly. These were the last footprints left by the wolf that was found dead. It's very sad. I, I'm quite moved actually that this wolf will no longer leave tracks that I can follow. And um, well, I suppose you're not supposed to get emotionally involved when you're tracking animals for films, but you do. Very special indeed. I'm extremely worried. Maybe someone laced the elk carcass with poison. Could the whole pack be dead? My quest to track Idaho's wild wolves has been beset by tragedy. The young female we were watching only last night has been found dead, and I'm terribly anxious about the rest of the pack. This was the last time we saw her. Amazing how she climbs up that steep ground. But well, she's fitting well there. Mm -hmm. Outside. They're the easiest thing in the world to poison. You just have to leave a carcass out that's been laced. If this was the case, it's possible the whole pack might have been poisoned by feeding on the carcass. The whole pack could be dead. We should go out and see if we can find any fresh signs of wolf. 
at the back of the meadows where we've seen the mousing. Okay. I think that's the best place to start. Sounds like a plan. How I hope the rest of the pack are still alive. I'm dreading that they're not, and only very fresh tracks will prove otherwise. We're relying entirely on tracking skills, and they'd better not let me down now. Anything? I haven't seen anything. No, nothing fresh anyway. Ooh, what's all this? Is that, is that a sheep fur? Well, she looks like wolf fur. The black dark tip, that's wolf fur. But that's a lot of fur to lose in one place. You know, by that dead wolf, it was signs of writhing around on the ground, and just hope that's not not connected what went to on it. Here. This doesn't bode well. Could there be another victim? On the other side of the meadow, Isaac doesn't find any recent signs of wolf life either. Wolf track. Is that a pad there in terms of Yes. Cow, cow pads dry on the surface and they'll be moist underneath. The crust has been broken through here and that's still damp to the touch. That's not very old. I suspect this morning actually. That's fantastic. That's what we're looking for. Hey Isaac. What'd you find? One absolutely fresh wolf track. That's good news, isn't it? At least one wolf's alive here. Say this is good. Uh, we got a wolf up at Nip and Tuck. Gotcha. We'll be right there. Great. There's a wolf very near Stanley. No time to lose. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. That's a wolf. It's a long way off. I can't quite tell which one it is. Now, I've never done this before. I'm sure this is the same female that we saw voling in the meadow. We spotted two more in the distance. It's fantastic news. It's great to see the wolves. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we're worried about what might have happened to them. And uh, it's really just lovely to see them in that landscape. Absolutely superb. I'm so relieved they're all right. I could watch these beautiful creatures for hours. I think you're actually probably viewing what will be the last of this kind of opportunity. I really do. So this is a very special time in history, really. And I think we ought to be able to find a way to live with them. It's, it's ridiculous. And Don't you think that, that ultimately, that that is the test of civilization, is whether we can live alongside other creatures? I feel passionately that we should be doing everything we can to protect these wolves. To me, there's no need to fear them. Look at this magnificent alpha male. Without him, his family wouldn't survive. All he's trying to do is keep his pack healthy and strong. But every time I look at this, I will think of the fact that many people here have already condemned this animal for simply living according to its nature. I'm conscious that the day that I leave here is the day that these animals come off of the endangered list and then anyone will be able to go out and to hunt them. I hope and I pray that my fellow hunters will treat these animals with the respect that they deserve, because this animal is the spirit of the wilderness.